Why don't we get into our first yeah. story here? Uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 Special Editions Ooh. have been revealed. Okay, um, yeah. And you can pre-order them now. We haven't seen gameplay yet. Uh, we've, no. We've definitely, like, and I mean real gameplay of, like, right. this is what it's going to look like when you play it. Um, but I, yeah, I, I, I there, there's a lot here, man. Uh, we've got the special edition, which is uh, 80 bucks. Um, okay. And you get like a bunch of stuff. You get like Ooh. bank robbery mission, a gang hideout mission uh, for like the single player. So uh, that's all single player stuff. That's all single player stuff. Okay. Um, they have, have they said anything about online? I don't think they have. There really. isn't. There is an online yeah. mode, but we know nothing about it. Everyone's assuming it's gonna be heavily inspired by GTA Online, which has yeah. been insanely popular. But other than that, we don't really know much about it. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see um, mm -hmm. because obviously they don't want to like eat into GTA Online. But uh, right. you also get a horse. You get a da dappled black <laughs> thoroughbred. What if you didn't get a horse at all unless you pre-ordered? Like you got a walk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's simpleton. Uh, it's it's um, yeah. Well, I mean, you, the, thankfully you don't even have to pre-order it to get this <laughs> horse because they can be obtained. Like you can get a horse in the game. Holy cow! What? So wait, can, is this a, a breed you can only get by pre-ordering? Or no, is it like no. It, it's uh, it and the saddle you get the Nuevo Pareso saddle, mm -hmm. which is a place I like to drop in uh, PUBG. Um, Perfect. They can both be obtained just in story mode. Oh, so this is just basically you're getting that. It's like a like little skip ahead. Yeah, okay, for sure. Okay, um, interesting. But you also get in game items like the Eagle Talon and the Iguana Scale, uh, which will basically like Arthur takes less damage and makes Arthur's environmental awareness last longer. Right, right. right. Um, and it, it's starting to make me think like, what is this game? Yeah. Um, why, don't the, uh, why don't you pull up the trailer? Oh, yeah, let's pull up the trailer here. Uh, it is uh, so. This is this is not a new trailer. This no, is the no, yeah, trailer we're not. three. <laughs> but <laughs> um, we uh, like it's it's. Oh god, there's so much here. There's extra weapons. You get a bunch of stuff. I have to imagine these weapons are also in the game. I can't volcanic pistol pump action. Yeah. Do you do you remember uh, like the gold weapons mm -hmm. from the first game? Yeah. And they just looked awful. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't really. I'm typically not a fan of gold-plated weapons in my yeah, games. Me neither. Very rarely do I think it looks good. Yeah, I and and also like I also tricked my friend into giving me all of his pre-order stuff for free. Mm -hmm. I still uh, feel bad about yeah. that. We normally don't look at the chat, but I'm, I saw Josh mentions. Uh, is am I from Canada? I'm actually not from Canada, <laughs> but everyone thinks I'm from Canada because of my name. You're from Canada to me. I'm from Vermont, which is basically Canada. Right. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, then there's also the Ultimate Edition and the Collector's Box. Um, the Ultimate Edition includes uh, everything from the Special Edition, uh, bonus outfits, um, another a different horse, so you can choose. Oh, sweet. Um, can I it, ride both at the same time? Uh, I wish you could do like the, uh, the Jean-Claude Van Damme. Damn, like split thing. Split yeah, thing that's on what, two exactly horses. what I was thinking. Um, <laughs> you get a theme, uh, a Survivor Camp theme. Um which is, uh, I, I'm not sure what that is. I'm guessing that is like, it, it, there's a lot of customization. Uh, it seems like based on this, uh, these these notes, um, like you have items that increase your defense. You have right. You have uh, different horses, different outfits, uh, which were present in the previous game. But th this sounds like you are going to actually be able to customize your survivor camp as well, which is which is interesting. Uh, and also, uh, there's a there are rank bonuses, which are basically you can rank up faster online um, and, and all that good stuff. Uh, and and also, there's like, oh hey, you can for this is for the single player. You'll get more money when you do uh, bank robbery missions and whatnot, or you'll do uh, you'll get um, more money for selling skins. Or so there there does seem to be like a a little like, hey, you wanna you wanna jump ahead and make more money doing less? Uh, Pre-order the game. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I'm always kind of like, whatever about that. Do, do you want me to play less of your game? Like paying? It's like that mobile game thing where you can pay money to play less of the game if you want. Yeah, and then it kind of makes you question the economy of like, well, am I spending too much time? Like, if I try playing normally, like, am I gonna take like way too much time where it doesn't feel worth it? So yeah, absolutely. that stuff's always weird. 
Um, and we're going to pull up the uh, the collector's box Ooh, here. Yeah. Um, it is uh, something. If you hit, if you hit a F11 over there. Oh, can... F11. Look at that. Um, oh, actually, why don't you, why don't you uh, right click? Right click? Right click for me and hit uh, open image and new tab. Oh, heck yeah. There we go. And now hit unhit F11. Oh, yeah. Unhit F11. I'm, I'm, teaching, I'm teaching Matt today. how to use computers. There we go. Now hit F11 one more time. There we go. Look Bam. at that. Bam. All at right. That. Let's go to that right there. Oh. Look at that box. Uh, it, metal. It's a metal Tithing box. I don't even know what tithing is. I don't either. Um, but it it's has got a lock and a key in if it. If you wow. want to keep it safe, uh, it's got uh, a, a cat, like a bunch of like in-world things. It's got a puzzle. If you're into puzzles, uh, I know all of my Red Dead Redemption fan friends are hella into puzzles. Um, but yeah, this uh, this is 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 one heck of a collector's box. Um, and I'm actually going to check the price for you right now. Uh, it is. It does not say. Our story does not say that what the box costs. Um, but anyway, point of the matter is it's a lot of stuff. Um, uh, it's a hundred dollars. A hundred dollars. I I th I don't think that's right. I'm going to take a look that's at this right here. That's what it says on your notes. We're right there. opening up. I think those notes may be wrong. Hundred dollars. A hundred dollars for the collector's $100. box. That is crazy. I thought for sure they were gonna go like nuts with like, here's a two hundred dollar box. You want it? You want to put your game in the box? That's relatively. You decent want to hide for your it. drugs in this metal tithing box? <laughs> uh, Absolutely, I do. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Except it, I don't need to because I'm in uh, California. I don't need to hide my drugs right. anymore. Right? Because because marijuana is legal here. Oh yeah, marijuana. That's, that's what I was talking wild, about. Wild man. Sure. <laughs> All right, let's move on to our next story. Uh, Red Dead Redemption is still coming out October twenty sixth for PS four and Xbox One. Ooh. And uh, I think, suffice it to say, we're very excited to play it. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the game. It's probably going to be one of the biggest games this year for sure. Oh yeah, uh, without a doubt. Um, but this next story um, is uh, from Sony. Sony. Uh, so basically, we've already got a bunch of E three uh, reveals so far. Sony plans to reveal a bunch of games leading up to E3 starting this Wednesday, the 6th. So, basically, they're, basically, from Wednesday to their press conference on June 11th at 6 p.m. Pacific, they will be uh, revealing a single thing per day uh, on one of their live stream channels. So, uh, on live.playstation.com, right. on their Twitch account, YouTube account, Twitter account, uh, oh, sorry, Facebook account. Um, and so, on June 6th, they will announce a new PS4 game with PlayStation VR support. Um, okay. Then on the next day, they will announce a release date for an upcoming Worldwide Studios title, which I'm thinking Dreams. That makes sense. Because this this could be anything from one of their studios. Yeah. It's something that's already been announced, right? Something that's already been announced. Um, Dreams. And they wouldn't do like... The Last of Us Part no. Two. They're, they're saving the main course for E3. I could, I could maybe see um, Days Gone. Oh yeah, okay. I could maybe see Days Gone. But yeah. Dreams, Dreams would make a little more sense, I think. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, so that comes Thursday. Friday, we'll get a new PS4 game. That's all we've got on that. Okay. Saturday, we're gonna get a new PlayStation VR game. Okay. And then Sunday, the day before E3 uh, for Sony's conference, uh, details for an eagerly anticipated game that's coming to PlayStation VR. Okay, so a game we already know that's going to get VR support. Uh, I I don't know. I don't know if this it it's unclear. It it makes me. That's what I I feel. Right. Like it's going to be like oh here's like it may be like another Resident Evil Seven thing where it's like. Oh, Last hey, of Us 2 has now got VR support. Exactly, where it's like a, like a big core game. Um, but I think it, it could just be, hey, you know that that game that you're really excited for for PlayStation VR? We're, we're going to show more details. We're just going to show more. Yes. That's gonna, that could also be it. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but surprise, Sony is going to reveal PlayStation games. So I'm actually not that surprised now that I think about it because they they kind of did this last year. I don't know if you remember this. Right before their press conference, they had like a pre-show, and they actually announced a bunch of stuff. They showed off. I think they showed off like Dreams. They they announced Undertale for PS4, like before the press conference. And I remember being like, "Whoa, they're like announcing stuff. Like that's crazy." And uh, so for them to do it this year also doesn't surprise me because they said their press conference is going to be primarily focused on those four core games: uh, Spider-Man, which we're looking at right now. Um, 
then uh, Ghost of Tsushima, Last of Us, and Death Stranding. So if they're only focusing primarily on those core four, I'm sure we'll see some trailers during the press conference, but it makes sense that like if they just want to focus on those four, they can get some other announcements out of the way early. Yeah, absolutely. And it'll be interesting to see if they do... Uh Last year they had that like hour long live stream right before the press conference. Right, exactly. Like yeah, I was saying, yeah. So yeah, where I, where they just announced a bunch of stuff. stuff out. <laughs> yeah, it'll be. I wonder if they'll do that again. Yeah, it, Sony has gotten progressively more and more. Just hey, sh- sit down, shut up, watch these trailers. Right, like last year there was almost no talking. Yeah, which is like cool. Cool. I kind of like a little bit of talking though. Yeah, get your message across a bit. Um, right, but. But yeah, I, I'm. I'm. It'll be interesting to see. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I hope. I hope we see gameplay for uh, Tsushima, uh, Ghost of Me too. Uh, Tsushima. So that'll be cool. Yeah, um, if that's a big focus. They gotta show something for that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so it'll it'll be cool to see something from that because I'm a big fan of uh, Sucker Punch. Right, dude. We're getting a, a Sucker Punch game and an Insomniac game right like, at the same around the same time, hopefully. Uh, and dude, like I don't know that we don't know much about Ghost of Tsushima, but I'm getting like a, like a, I think about them and they're like open world platforming games. And I'm like, man, this could be like a stealth Tenchu type of thing. Yeah. Like open world Tenchu game. I could be really, that would really be really cool that. for sure. Yeah. And, and it's just like, you, man, we just haven't had like a big open world Japanese, uh, feudal so, era yeah. game. And that, that would be really, rad. that'd be really cool. Except for Yakuza, uh, Yakuza Ishin. Oh, yeah. yeah, totally. <laughs> which never came out in the US. Bring Yakuza Ishin. To the West, Sega. I'm calling you out. Yeah, I just, someone's got to do it. I just started team. Yakuza Zero, and I'm I'm loving it's it. Fantastic. It, it is like, do you, do you wow. know much about Ishin? Uh, I know that it, it is like uh, all these characters in, inexplicably samurai. Yeah, like basically, like they're all different characters, but they're played by the same like, oh, characters. Oh, so it's not it's not Kazuya. Yeah, yeah, he's it's like not Kazuya. Sorry, um, Kiryu. <laughs> Kiryu, Kiryu Kazuma. Uh, yeah, he's like playing uh, uh, like a samurai, and they're they're all so it's like. It reminds me of those, uh, have you ever seen like a sitcom where they'll have like an episode about like, let me tell you about when my great grandfather came oh, on really? the Mayflower. Does it start like that? No, no, no. It doesn't, oh, it doesn't okay. start like that. But you know how they do that and then it cuts to like, it's the same characters playing yeah. people in the past. It's basically that. And I love that. Like as a concept, I think that's so cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Anyway, that's totally, someone has to go off tangent about Yakuza um, without Michael here. And oh, yeah. I, w- I will be that person. Yeah, I, I, I really like it. I love, I love martial arts. Um, I love... Uh, Japanese culture and the 80s theme is just so cool. Yes, specifically uh, Zero, the 80s theme is fantastic. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. Playing Space Harrier, like, I played so much Space Harrier. It's like, <laughs> I'm, I, yeah. Oh, man. Uh, it, it is, it is a really cool series, and I'm glad I'm finally giving it a shot. It is, yeah. uh, it's something special. Absolutely. Um, All right. Next story. Yeah. So, for our next story, we've got State of Decay 2. Um, the patch, uh, patch 1.2 released over the weekend, and it is, 20 gigabytes large man wow it is freaking wild uh so sadly state of decay 2 was a bit disappointing it was a deeply broken game i would say so and this this patch doesn't deliver any content you you think with a patch that size you think oh wow are they adding what are they adding this is like a lot of fixes a lot of increases to stability uh and network improvements okay um some of the big stuff uh, is the elimination of crashes due to being out of memory, which is a big thing. Oh, yeah. That seems like a huge deal. Yeah. Uh, but one of the funnier ones is grenades no longer get stuck and explode in front of client characters' face or behind their head while throwing, <laughs> which which just sounds like something I would do in real life. I wish uh, we had a, a footage of that. That'd be great. Yeah. I, it, I wanna, I, I've never seen that, but I want to I see what that looks like. Yeah. I, I, I that, that sounds hilarious. Um, but, also, but also bad. <laughs> and they yeah, should totally all, fix it. That, that should not be in the game, I, I don't think. But, uh, but yeah, that, that's, uh, that's, that's the kind of stuff that's in this patch. And it, it's uh, studio head Jeff Strain said that this patch today is just the beginning. We have big plans for State of Decay 2, and mm-hmm. we're humbled and appreciative to you for giving us the opportunity to make those big plans happen. So mm-hmm. this is just the beginning of their fixes. Okay. Um, like you, you actually played more of it than I did, right? Right. I, I played a uh, about like seven hours or so, and I, I liked it, but it it kind of wore thin really quickly. And then yeah, there were just like a lot of weird issues I thought with the the UI and and just like yeah, some technical issues. I mean, I tr- 
I was playing it on an X here in the office, and it ran decently well. Not 60, though, which you feel like it could for kind of like right. the what the game looks like. But then, like, trying to play it at home on, like, my launch Xbox, like, it was, like, oh, really? not even. No. Jeez. No, I had to play it on my PC if I wanted to play it at home. This was just not possible on that original launch. So seeing that they're, like, trying to fix, like, stability stuff is, I think, the, f- the first step. And then from there, I'd like to maybe see them... Hopefully they could, I would like to see them address uh, like UI stuff. Maybe they could fix that a little bit. And then just more more stuff to do, like more content, more more things. Like I'm glad they're supporting it. Um, that feels like a trend, you know, with games like nowadays is you don't like just let a game die. You do your best to kind of like stick with it and, and try and, you know, give a better experience for the people who, who do really like it and want more from that game. So I'm glad they're doing that. Yeah, that that's, it's, it's cool to see a game not get abandoned. Um, right. And, uh, and and like with Microsoft, it's one of Microsoft's marquee titles for the Xbox One. It is. And they don't really have much else right now. I've it's been it's been hard to watch um, a lot of Xbox games come out and like not really deliver on what people hoped they would be. Sure. Um, because um, as someone who really appreciates their backwards compatibility, their right, um, their cross play, all the stuff that they've been doing that isn't necessarily the big marquee thing you'd see at E three. Um, I was hoping, you know, let, let's get a win. <laughs> let's get a win for Xbox. Um, I, I agree. People say all the time, like, oh, you guys hate Xbox. Not true. I yeah. am always rooting for Xbox. I want Xbox to succeed. They're just, they're stumbling right now. Yeah. And, and I like, I want to love Xbox because I actually think their backwards compatibility stuff is awesome. I think Game Pass is actually a really smart idea. Like, I think they're doing a lot of stuff on like the program, like, like, service end of the xbox that actually i think is better than playstation they just don't have the games right now and they need yeah. more yeah, yeah e3 is going to be a big uh a big stage for them right um, i'm very excited to see what they're going to show because i feel like we don't know much about them we kind of yeah. i feel like like sony has pretty much like told us exactly what they're going to show for the most part yeah microsoft is like a huge question mark so i'm actually really excited for theirs yeah it, it'll be interesting um i mean i'd be happy if they were just like here's 50 new backwards compatible games but I feel like they need a little more than that. I, t- I, I told you about my theory, right? My, uh, what is it? My, my like, big bet, because for the last couple of years, they've always had, like, a big announcement. Like, hey, we're doing Game Pass. Hey, we're doing Backwards Compat. Hey, now original games are Backwards Compat. My theory is they're going to announce that they've, they put out a bunch of games for Backwards Compat. And a lot of these have online support. You can't play them online because they shut down the original Xbox servers back in 2011, I believe. My guess is they're going to bring those servers back and they're going to let people play. Like, you can now play um, Crimson Skies online and we're going to make Halo 2 backwards compat. You can play it online. That's my bold, crazy out there prediction is they're going to announce that. I, I could see that. Uh, I, I also hope that the... I hope the hoichi method where they make games run at 4k and faster frame rates um is applied to everything that'd be great i I imagine it it takes a lot of work but uh, that is so cool every time they've done that with a game oh yeah skate 3 and and red dead like i so so awesome when i got my xbox one x the first thing i loaded up was skate 3 and i was shocked i was just so genuinely shocked by how good it looked because I was expecting, like, oh, okay, it'll look, eh. Um, right. But it it, 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 it was held, night it, and day. It held up really well. Like, uh, yeah, it, it was it was completely wild. Um, yeah. I, you know, it, it's, it, it justified the purchase for me. Like, because I really cool. like playing old games. Having them look that good on a big 4K TV, just unbeatable for me personally. Sure, sure. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's, that's that. But, you know... Uh, you, you were talking about State of K two. It just wasn't landing in all the right ways. Unfortunately, not. Um, our, our review said as much. It said uh, it, it it took issue with the technical faults, but it was also like if some of the stuff was a little more engaging, if there was more reason to be here, right? They would be easier to overlook. Um, so ho- hopefully, ho- hopefully, this will make the experience that's already there easier to get into. Yeah, definitely. But here's uh, hoping. Yeah, that that was our last story for today. Yeah, we got a whole 10 minutes. Yeah, we got a whole 10 minutes. How are we going to do that? Well, let me tell you, John Luke, there's a special game that came out this year uh, that we just had a review go up over the weekend. Mm -hmm. um, And it is by far my favorite game this year. 
definitely one of mine for sure. And it is The Forest. Um, Ooh, yeah. And uh, Alessandro Barbosa, who also wrote our uh, State of Decay 2 review, oh, yeah. um, uh, reviewed it. And uh, he, he loved it. He gave it an 8 out of 10. And it's, uh, it's, it's super... Oh, man, uh, you and I played through the entire game together with uh, mm-hmm. with our coworker Jake Decker. Yep, and, and, and a little bit of Rob at the end. As yes, well. a little bit of Rob, um, and uh, it, it was it was an amazing experience. I really, really enjoyed it. The storytelling, where it didn't like it, it, it tells a story, but you never have to engage with the story if you just want to play it like any other survival game. Right, but it funnels you towards the end of the story by giving you more tools. It's kind of like a Metroidvania type yeah, thing. Yeah, exactly. And like that that compelled me to play it. I don't like survival games that much. Yeah, I'm right and, there and with like, you. I'm not a fan of Rust or Ark. And a lot of the issues with that is that there's like no goal for me, at least. Like the, like the goal is supposed to be like you make bigger, better stuff, but I just don't personally find that that interesting. Like I need a more narrative reason to play something. And The Forest is like you want to do this survival stuff so that you can be prepared to explore and find the story stuff and get that story. And I think like that on its own was like a really like compelling reason to like keep playing. And it made me want to like engage with it in a way that I feel like other survival games have not done for me. Yeah, it, it was, uh, it, I mean, so for, for those who don't know, it is a game where you are in a plane with your son and much like Bioshock, you crash. But then a weird red guy picks up your son and then runs off with him. And basically the story is you have to find your son. Um, but you don't have to. You can just go make a house and live in your house forever. It's true, yeah. You, you can technically do that if you want. Uh, and it y- basically you you start off and you're doing the survival thing. You're, you're finding food. You're drinking water. Uh, but then you start coming across cannibals, which you're seeing on screen now. Um, and, uh, man, they, uh, th- this game can be freaking creepy. <laughs> this game's really creepy. Even playing co-op, uh, the, the review talks about, uh, Alessandro's review talks about how the game's, uh, scarier solo, and I would agree with that for sure, but I think even, depending if you're playing with the right people, uh, even just playing, like, the three of us, it was still really creepy to run into, like, caves and stuff, and there'd be times where, like, oh, I'm gonna stay at the, the, the house, and I'm gonna chop wood while you guys go out and explore. And then, like, cannibals would show up, and I'm like, oh, I'm by myself now. Oh, no. <laughs> and it, like, it just, like, that dread was so, oh, man, I don't know. Like, I love this game. Yeah. This game is so cool. It was really, it, I mean, like, you were saying, like, when we would split up. Yeah. That was some of the most tense moments where we would, where I'd be like, okay, I'm going to go off and get some stuff. And then, like, a freaking monster would show up. And I'm and I'm done. I'm like guys, 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 get over here. <laughs> um, or we would just see something cool, and we would all like, uh, oh, was that the was that the house that we built that was just like death every time we went to it? No, that was oh, that was the okay. first house we did. There is some footage of that as well. Okay, yeah, yeah, we made this one house. Unfortunately, it was like we made it because it was right next to this really major cave that we ended up needing to go to a lot. But it was also right next to like a cannibal <laughs> village. <laughs> And it was like, we can't ever stay here. <laughs> they kept coming over asking for sugars. Like, hey, it's like, hey, we don't got none. And then they would attack us. Because we didn't have enough sugar. Yeah, it was like, hey, man. This is our sugar. We spent a lot of time. <laughs> we f- we crafted this sugar. Um, yeah, there's our first house. Uh, Pretty good house. And it was, it, what a fantastic experience. And I I highly recommend everyone check it out. It is, um, it is, it is by far my favorite game this year. And... I've I've played Gears. I'm sorry. I've played God of War. <laughs> you played Gears of. <laughs> I, I played Gears of War this year for the first time, and <laughs> this was better than that. Um, yeah, it, it, this this game was fantastic, and uh, uh, even better with friends. The the one thing that I would criticize is that uh, this is something that you and I were both very excited about because there's a walkie-talkie, right? And it is the only way to communicate with people online if you're not using Discord or Skype. Um, or if you're just joining a random guy's server, uh, or not server, but game, you can open up your walkie-talkie and talk to them. Sure. But there's no proximity chat? Exactly. Yeah, we were, like, hoping that it would be this cool thing of, like, well, when you're near each other, you can hear each other, and if you're not, you have to use the walkie-talkie. And the thing is, when you hold up the walkie-talkie, there are other items you can't use, and that adds further tension. Yeah. But unfortunately, it's like, no, no, you can only hear each other with the walkie-talkie, and that 
unfortunately, that's not great. So I'll, I would love for them to patch in like a proximity chat and oh, maybe yeah. improve that. Because yeah. we ended up we ended up just kind of cheating it and using Discord. Um, yeah. Which I would I would recommend that way because I think the trying to use the walkie talkies may be too much of a hassle. Yeah, and if if it would be cool if if you know like we said if the proximity chat was in because the walkie talkie does take up a spot where your torch would be. So right. if you're in a if you're in a cave and you want to use your lighter to light up a torch, um, you can't talk to anyone while you're doing that, mm-hmm. which is. Which, I mean, using a torch in this game is crucial. Uh, oh, totally. <laughs> you should absolutely use a torch um, to, to see anything. Uh, and then, of course, you can get a flashlight. As you're seeing here, there's a bunch of items in here. Yeah. It was so cool. Every time you find a new item. Oh, man. It was like, whoa, like, this is a game changer. We have a flashlight now. Yeah. We have a map now. Like, we have a chainsaw. We have, we have this, a chainsaw. This, this. Um, and, yeah, it, it, oh, man. Fantastic game. Uh, Highly recommend it, especially I, if you want to play it with a couple of friends. You can do up to eight. I don't know if I'd recommend eight. That's a lot. That would probably suck all the tension away. But I think four, yeah, four. Is, is about... We, we went up to five. We went up to five, and yeah. definitely some of the tension was gone from that. So yeah. I would say like three or four is probably the, the best right. um, to do. Uh, and uh, it... Uh, sorry, someone called me a fake Vegeta fan, and it, it, <laughs> caught, it caught my attention. Oh, don't look at that. No, don't, um, don't look at the... But yeah, the the forest was just a fantastic experience, and I I want to go back. We're, we've we've convinced some people in the office to play it play it with us for a second time, and we're just gonna like kind of let let them. Uh, they're driving. We're just gonna be there we're for we're there for them for support. Yeah. Exactly. So uh, go play the forest. Go yeah. play the forest. It's very yeah, good. Uh, Alessandro gave it an, an eight out of ten. Yep. It's a good score. Yeah, excellent score. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, that that's <laughs> this oh is, yeah, this is Rob. Just uh, this is when we had five people and Rob is just chainsawing and this is the moment where it's like okay this is probably like the tension is now gone. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but it was really funny. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, and and that's another thing is that like we replaced a lot of the tension with just having an awesome time and yeah. laughing at all this stuff and getting attacked by camouflaged alligators, uh, which scare the crap out of me. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that that's uh, that's what we've got for today. Yeah, um, play the, the forest is basically the consensus of today's show. Yeah, <laughs> everything else we said doesn't matter. Play the forest. Yeah, I, I can't recommend it enough. It's mm-hmm. it's it's truly truly um, exceptional. All right, so that is the end of the show. You know what time it is? Uh, it is time to get more coffee. I was gonna say it's time to thank everyone. Oh yeah, we gotta thank <laughs> thank the coffee. Yeah, thank thank the coffee gods for bringing it to us. Um, thank uh, Callie and Michael for uh, mm-hmm. holding it down uh, w- uh, when I am at home writing the notes. They do an awesome job. They're very busy, so we we uh, decided to help them out today. Yep. Yeah, um, busy E three stuff. Keep an eye out for all that good stuff. All that good stuff. Yes. Uh, want to thank Tony. Tony for helping out with the Tony notes in the back. Uh, we want to thank Emily. Yep, puts getting the us set water. And helps, us yeah, she got us water today. Yep. Thank you, Emily, for that. Uh, Tay, who normally sets stuff up, um, me as well. I set up stuff today. I, I'd thank like to myself. thank John Luke for being here, so I didn't oh, have to do the switching. And, oh, thank you. Wow, <laughs> and, and I, screw no, everything I didn't, up. I didn't want to say anything, but I'm glad you, you yep. brought up. Yeah, no, thank you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Teaching me how to use a computer, it was awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you did some notes to, as well. So, oh yeah, yeah. So thank you for that. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, uh, and thanks, Chris Pereira, for always being. Uh, mm-hmm our guy making sure we we don't make any mistakes and yeah it's uh it, it, we've got a great team and i'm so happy to be a part of it yeah and uh stick around because in a minute we're going to have uh rob and jake are going to be playing far cry 5's vietnam dlc expansion yeah so they're going to check that it's out it's going to be awesome yeah um i'm actually haven't seen any of it i'm kind of curious uh, me too how that is. I, yeah. I like far cry 5 so we'll, we'll have to not as much as the forest though no all right bye everybody right. bye guys